Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, welcome to this uh, first lecture on uh, deep learning. Uh, we are having this master's course um, uh, in MSCS and uh, master's in data science. So, um, deep learning, uh, what exactly is deep learning? So, if we talk about the history of uh, machine learning, so all of us know that uh, <clears throat> machine learning has evolved uh, primarily in the last uh, 20 to 25 years. Uh, so we had have uh, some uh, statistical advancements in the last uh, three or 400 years. And uh, around 50 to 60 years ago, or maybe even uh, more than that, people started to research on uh, statistical algorithms. And uh, they found uh, very useful algorithms as a result of that research. And uh, those algorithms, you know, they became uh, the main area of study in 1960s, 70s, 80s, or something like that. So when we had the database uh, revolution in 1970s, then we started to use those algorithms, those statistical algorithms and mathematical algorithms uh, for the benefit of data analysis. So that was in 1980s when the field was being developed. And uh, the first uh, uh, output of that research was the emergence of data mining. <clears throat> At that time, we used to call it uh, knowledge discovery in databases, KDD. So that was primarily data mining. And uh, we had some statistical tools that came up. For example, we had the uh, R tool in those times. And we also had the Python language, which was uh, not primarily a statistical language like R. And we had other tools like Mathematica and you know uh, IBM SPSS, which became very famous and still it is very famous. So these tools actually laid the foundation for um, machine learning, data science, and deep learning. Okay, so it started actually with the statistical tools. And even now, if uh, you have to do statistical work, so people, I think, they prefer to use R rather than Python, which is more of a development language. Um, so uh, what happened was, K in uh, 1990s, the data was like maybe of the order of megabytes. And uh, these uh, data mining tools like uh, R and uh, you know, RapidMiner, Nime, so they were able to you know, crunch this data and get some analytics uh, from the data. And uh, in parallel, we had the business intelligence tools as well, which came up in 1990. So I think uh, Tableau, Power BI, and ClickSense, uh, and uh, you know we have uh, we also have uh, this uh, BI tool by uh, Dundas D U N D A S, and we have uh, one or two others very famous tools which I can't remember right now. So all of them have sprung up in the last 15 to 20 years, and they have been pretty successful in analyzing the data. Uh, now the uh, in uh, when we started with 2001 you know the internet had been there since the last uh, maybe 9 or 10 years and people were starting to accumulate more and more data so when google uh, wrote this paper on their big data analytics platform in 2004 i think so they published a paper with respect to their uh, big data platform and also with respect to the map reduce implementation language so that was the time when data really started to gather in huge quantities uh, in the companies. So that gave rise to you know, uh, machine learning. Uh, so data mining, which was mostly being done on tools, uh, of which I have given you a few examples like Veka. Uh, Veka is still used uh, very frequently. Uh, Rapid Miner and Nine. So I think these are the three front end tools, but these tools are not able to handle a large amount of data. Okay, 
so the problems uh, so the, the the focus shifted from these tools to python primarily because python is a development language uh, in which we can develop uh, big data platforms okay so when we have the big data platforms then we can uh, uh, ingest big data we can store the big data in big databases uh, we can make it secure through cyber security practices uh, we can store the data in in many different types of schemas which are not tabular schemas we can have big data architectures to analyze the data wrangle the data convert the data or transform it so everything we can do on big data by using a big data architecture which we can very easily develop on python so <clears throat> unfortunately the front end tools like um, r uh, rapid miner and beka they are not capable to handle big data so they can only handle small data okay so anyways in uh, after google published their big data platform and their big data language which is called map reduce language at that time that was the most famous big data processing technology so what happened after was that someone uh, there was this guy called doug cutting so he primarily uh, took this idea from google and he replicated their idea to develop a open source system which is called hadoop so nowadays hadoop is the standard technology for storing big data for uh, analyzing big data in a database so hadoop offers you big database uh, big data warehouse um data you can store data on hadoop in many different types of formats you can link up hadoop with different types of databases and you can run even sql on hadoop so hadoop is now the default selection for storing and managing big data okay so while this was happening uh, in the in the first decade of this century the field of machine learning was being developed very uh, at a very rapid pace so the problems that we are solving now in machine learning like uh, customer segmentation uh, prediction uh, churn prediction inventory optimization sales forecasting uh, and other many other types of regression problems and classification problems that we have already seen so all of these were you know the the industry became aware of this in the first decade of this century and there were probably hundred thousands of applications in the world and still they are occurring so when the people started to see the benefit of machine learning so then they started to think about handling problems which cannot be handled by machine learning okay so all of you have had experience uh, with machine learning and you know that machine learning is a very cool technology which is offering you at least 15 to 20 different types of algorithms with which you can you know make predictions using classification or regression problem domain and you know what is feature selection you know what is train uh, test split validation and you have been through all those exercises but uh, there is a class of problems that actually cannot be solved by machine learning and that class of problems has to do with data which is very different from the tabular data or even the big data which is being stored in hadoop because even in hadoop we are storing transactional data so you must be knowing that nowadays there is a trend to develop data lakes uh, rather than databases so you have your oracle typical database so from the oracle database you do many things to put your data in a data lake and your data lake is now the repository which is accessed to uh, take the data for analytics not the database so we have some companies here in pakistan even who are currently implementing the data lake solution and the data lake solution is being offered by cloud all the cloud vendors like amazon and azure they are offering data lake solutions to you so uh, the point is that there is a class of problems 
in which you have to learn you still have to learn you still have to make a prediction but the problem is that the type of the data is so different that uh, traditional machine learning algorithms or even hadoop if you use that as a data storage uh, and a data analytics platform uh, it is not able to give a good performance over this type of data so for example i am talking about image data so yeah so if i give you an image like if you want to drive an automated car so the car has cameras if it if the car has to drive itself then the car has cameras right to see what is happening around the car so you have to process the image data in a very short period of time to and tell the car to do this to do this to do this so the automated car solution um requires the use of more complicated machine learning algorithms rather than things like random forest or svm or you know logistic regression they might come in handy they might not come in handy the point is that when we have a tremendously big data in which we have to do machine learning okay so then i have to go for techniques which are not uh based on machine learning i have to discover some new type of algorithms that can help me manage this complicated data okay so the complication is basically coming in the form of data types so if i tell you k okay, the data types which we are interested in are these so images imagine you have images of any you know there could be images related to anything like traffic images or uh, geological or astronomical images or images of uh, persons for a video surveillance feed i have to process image data so i have to classify objects in an image i have to detect the objects in an image i have to classify them and then i have to make some decision on them so that's a very important field of research these days regarding images or uh, aisa bhi ho sakta hai ki i have an image and i want the computer to generate a label for that image can i give it an image of a dog and the computer tells me that this is a dog okay so that's also one field of research that uh, is being used quite a lot nowadays so related to images we have at least 5 to 10 different problems like image captioning image generation image classification image segmentation which are necessary now to solve some complicated problems so we'll see some of the problems right now the other type of data which wants processing is the video so we take the video feeds in real time you convert them to images you analyze the data in the images and then you do something you make a prediction or you give some recommendation so live video yes. streaming live video analysis is also something which requires you to develop some advanced machine learning techniques ji so sir like uh, for some uh, right now a lot of uh, crime intelligence agencies are uh, working on methods to facially recognize criminals uh, through surveillance cameras that's also deep learning yes absolutely that is 100% deep learning because um, okay let me just uh, so this type of thing these are the projects that you can potentially do so face recognition you can see here that if you want to recognize someone's face then you have to triangulate the uh, the shape of the face in this way you know and uh, based on these triangles you can detect the particular face of any person okay so for this you definitely need a deep learning algorithm like uh, for example you definitely you will use a convolutional neural network 
to detect such uh, sort of a uh, such sort of an image. But you can understand that this case can there to maintain a very high level of accuracy is very difficult. But if the system is not able to detect the person, then what's the use of that system? So now you will see many apps coming up, even mobile apps, Hongi Joke, who are able to detect faces. And typically you will get the Python code for that very easily. Face recognition, uh, the basic code, the vanilla code for face recognition, you can get from some blog very easily. You can try it out. But if you have to develop a whole application for some company, so that is not an easy task. So you detect a person at runtime. And you say, okay, this is this person. So many software houses are, are, are already working on such a solution, and this is not easy. You have to work on it, and you have to develop the techniques. So convolution neural network are one type of solutions for this problem, and you can couple them up with other machine learning solutions, which are the the old machine learning solutions like SVM or uh, logistic regression. So in a in a big task. Uh, the main purpose of deep deep learning is to is to make the detection right, uh, and you can you can use the help of other old machine learning algorithms to help you achieve that. Abhi though, I have not told you still what is deep learning all about. I'm just telling you the applications. Now this is these are actually the. Sir, a question. मेरा ये सवाल है की जो इमेज डेटा है ठीक है नाउ अब आपने एक जो ऊपर थोड़ी एग्जांपल दी हुई थी वीडियो की ऑफ कार्स डिटेक्शन ना आपने स्लाइड्स में दिखाया था बस फेस डिटेक्शन उसमें कार्स और उसकी स्ट्रीट पे डिटेक्शन भी एक एग्जांपल था ठीक है द स्लाइड शो ये का अभी आपको नजर आ रहे हैं कैन यू सी दिस कार्स जी सर आई कैन जस्ट अ सेकंड यू कांट आपके ऊपर पता नहीं बहुत स्मॉल सा लिख दिख रहा है कि अह वो जो ओके जस्ट जस्ट वेट आप देख रहे थे सर सर इसमें अगर मैं इसमें चीज पॉइंट आउट करूँ की ठीक है आप ये प्रॉब्लम डीप लर्निंग से कर सकते हैं लेकिन पॉइंट है के डीप लर्निंग में अभी भी सबको पता है इट्स अ ब्लैक बॉक्स नाउ वी आई कैन डू द सेम थिंग सिंपल इमेज प्रोसेसिंग में लगा के बैकग्राउंड सब्ट्रैक्शन के थ्रू कर सकते हैं ठीक है दैट इज अ मोर हाउ कैन आई से इट मोर रोबस्ट या मोर ऐसा तरीका जो मुझे पता है एग्जैक्टली क्या हो रहा है कभी मैंने एक एल्गोरिथम लगाया है एल्गोरिथम में सर्टेन इनपुट्स हैं उस एल्गोरिथम में सर्टेन आउटपुट्स हैं उसका एक पर्टिकुलर फार्मूला है जिसके थ्रू वो बैकग्राउंड सब्ट्रैक्शन कर रहा है सो व्हाई Won't I use background subtraction for detecting the cars rather than using deep learning for detecting them? ये मेरा सवाल। देखिए, it's a very good question and I'm glad you asked it. Uh, I have had experience over oh, uh, over this domain and I will let you know the answer now. The point is that the <clears throat> you have to understand the reason for the technology, right? Image uh, processing. is just to process the image right uh, there are many different type of tasks uh, that an image wants for example edge detection background subtraction foreground subtraction image segmentation image clustering theek hai so the 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 purpose of uh, applying those task is to maybe sharpen the image uh, maybe convert it to grayscale or maybe do something else the purpose of image processing is not to do machine learning is not to make a detection is not to make a classification of the image is not to output probabilities ki what is the probability that this image is a car or a bike or a lorry or a rickshaw or a cycle image processing cannot do that 
similarly to how in machine learning what happens you know you want a prediction right but you know that you have to wrangle the data and you know you have to transform the data and you know you have to select the relevant features if you don't do these three things then you are never going to have a good accurate predictive model similarly image processing is actually a data wrangling task for deep learning deep learning can be considered to be a mother of uh, image processing technology because uh, even the, the no no listen even if you don't do any image processing it is better that you do before you give the image data to a deep learning algorithm it is always better or almost always better that you process the data using image processing and then digitize the image and give it to the deep learning algorithm it is almost always better to do this similarly to how it is better to wrangle the data and transform it before you give it to a machine learning algorithm right but the point is that even if i decide i will not do it i don't care because i don't have that knowledge i just give it to the deep learning algorithm now i agree with your statement that this is a black box but it is only a black box with respect to the mathematical equations that go that get executed at the different layers but i can i can quantify what happens by writing equations i don't i don't need to understand what happens at every neuron because there might be thousands of neurons so what will i do to even understand that i am just interested in the final output so being a black box is not a problem for me that's what i'm telling you so i was saying that even if you do not apply image processing the image is dirty the image is noisy the image is shadowy the image is foggy i have the deep learning algorithms to clean the image i have the deep learning algorithms to extract the relevant features and make a detection about anything i wanted to detect so image processing algorithms might not have that strength to work in every situation they might have the strength to work in for example uh, pictures of uh, trees okay but they might not have the strength to work in this scenario where we have different types of cars uh, with so many different types of shapes and so many different colors with different types of speeds on different types of roads so image processing algorithm will never be able to detect all these different varieties and classify them it is not a classification approach right and even if you are able to do that you cannot generalize it well, for example i do image processing then i give my data to svm and svm makes a very good prediction about some objects in the image that can happen uh, svm is a very famous algorithm in image processing but what i am trying to say is that with deep learning you can solve in a less complicated way with a lesser amount of effort and you have variety to do many many more things than what you can have in image processing so image processing i had the image processing course when i was doing my undergraduate in jik in 2000 so they we had this uh, we had this uh, matlab type of interface i i forgot the name of the tool and we used to upload That's images of uh, i don't know monkeys and i don't know what other uh, other other things so monkeys ki image upload karke then we used to experiment by turning it to gray scale by sharpening the image by brightening it by dissecting it segmenting it. but that is that is not related to data analytics so deep learning is actually an advanced type of machine learning so that's what you want you want to make a prediction or you want to do an unsupervised learning scenario in which you want the algorithm to cluster things right this uh, in ml2 we are going to do unsupervised learning for typical small data not big data okay so you will understand the different clustering algorithms uh, in a in one or two weeks okay but what if i want to do that on data which is image data so i, I want this for example here in this image i want the uh, uh, i want the system to say that all of these are cars okay i wanted to detect each car i wanted to say that these are buildings i wanted to say that these are trees this is a lane how can that happen image processing cannot be that much accurate or it can never be that much generalizable that you start 
detecting such kind of things in all the possible scenarios where you want to process images. No, that is not happening. So what happens is that image processing can be used to denoise the image. You know, if there's if there is some dirt in the image, the image is a raw image. So I can use it to sharpen it, to increase the contrast, to increase the brightness. Maybe segment something. So I can I can I can make a segment that this is seems to be one segment. This seems to be one segment, and this is one segment, and this is one segment. So I can do a segmentation like this, and then I can give these four segments to the deep learning algorithm, and it is going to tell me, oh, this is a car, this is a building, this is a tree. Do you understand what I'm saying? तो ये यू कैन डू इट आप कर सकते हैं आप आप अपने इमेज प्रोसेसिंग करें सेगमेंट करें एसवीएम को दें वो कर लेगा दैट्स नॉट अ डीप लर्निंग एल्गोरिथम राइट बट व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज के दिस काइंड ऑफ एप्लीकेशन माइट नॉट बी जनरलाइजेबल यानी एसवीएम इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ इमेज प्रोसेसिंग इफ आई वांट टू क्लासिफाई समथिंग फ्रॉम इमेजेस आई हैव टू यूज मशीन लर्निंग एल्गोरिथम इमेज प्रोसेसिंग कैन नॉट हेल्प मी क्लासिफाई एनीथिंग इट कैन हेल्प मी मेक अ सेगमेंटेशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द texture of the pixels but it cannot help me classify for that i have to use machine learning algorithms so nowadays when we talk of deep learning and i still have not told you what is deep learning all about when we talk of deep learning to so deep learning is actually uh if if we are using deep learning with image data then it is a typical solution right now ke you actually first process the images through image processing algorithms to make them better so that the deep learning algorithm can be able to work uh on uh, these images in a better way and it can you know uh classify the objects in the image very quickly if you if you don't process it using image processing techniques then maybe it will take a lot of time the other point about deep learning is that there are there are some applications which have nothing to do with images like for example uh textual analytics nlp and uh, this all textual data which is definitely big data so that's called sequence prediction that's called sequence prediction okay ke uh, i give you i give you the text from some uh, from some newspaper and you give the text to the computer deep learning algorithm it is going to learn how the data is being uh, generated and then i will ask the algorithm to predict the next sentence so that is that is called sequence prediction and that that is very useful in bioinformatics algorithms when you have to predict the next genome sequence and in many many applications of text analytics then when you have to predict the next text that is going to be there then you can work with speech data speech data is also there so you need deep learning algorithms for that that is not image data so that the i but i'm talking the speech can be converted to data and i can process what i'm saying by using speech speech data so image data videos data speech data textual data so all of these are generating lots and lots of complicated machine learning problems that cannot be solved by traditional uh, machine learning algorithms okay so i will show you the applications and then i will tell you ke what exactly it is all about how does it actually happen okay so this is one type of project that you guys can do uh i i want uh, in fact what i want is that uh, i want you guys to work one of you or one group to work on roads of karachi so you see here that for example it is able to detect the car with the certain probability it's saying that it's a car it's a car so i can also output the probability it is go it is go the algorithm can state that okay these are all the trees with a probability of uh, 0.89 i am detecting it so these are all the cars that's also with a high probability or if you if you want to sum them up to 1 then you can sum up sum them up to 
if it is from the all uh, from the single probability density function then you can sum them up to one or you can have a separate pdf for the trees and separate pdf for the cars it depends on what we want to do but what i was interested in doing was the uh, if we can have a project in which i want to detect the different types of vehicles uh, that i can have at different points of time at some at some place in karachi for example so what you will need to do is ke aapko ja ke you will need to pay uh, take videos uh, of that particular time of that particular area at different times of uh, the day for maybe two or three weeks theek okay? hai and then we can uh, use that data to uh, detect uh, the types of uh, vehicles that are there and then use that information in some algorithm or some formula to calculate the traffic density okay so if you can do this then that will be a big deal big deal because for, for the roads of karachi that's a terrible situation because we have bikes we have rickshaws we don't have a situation like this it is this is a very cool situation right but you can see here i have a truck i have different types of cars i have rickshaw i have a, i have bicycles i have donkey carts and i don't know what other odds and ends okay so this is not an easy solution but this is a very interesting problem to solve with respect to our own country uh, which i want one of you to work on that's the thing inshallah so uh, dr tani ke sawal hai ji deep learning is sorry uh, i can't hear you properly uh, can you hear me now yeah uh, deep learning ki feasibility uh, in terms of pakistan ke andar is tarah ki kuch implementation karte hain right रिटर्न ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट कोई कोई बिजनेस हमारे आइडिया पर अडॉप्ट भी करेगा या नहीं एट दिस पॉइंट तो मतलब यानी कि ऑब्वियसली कोई कोई इन्वेस्ट क्यों करेगा अनलेस कि उसको बहुत ज्यादा कोई रिटर्न ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट मिल रहा हो एट दिस पॉइंट क्योंकि पाकिस्तान से रिलेटेड अगर हम बात करेंगे या आई एग्री आई एग्री विद यू बट इफ यू लुक एट इफ यू लुक एट व्हाट एचईसी इज डूइंग सो इट इज Uh, motivating the researchers since the last i think 15 20 years to uh, develop such technologies in their universities and uh, always take on an academic partner because in here in pakistan you know the business is not there the data analytics business is not that much in pakistan it has not picked up space uh, except a few large companies which are doing very complicated bi level solutions uh the machine learning and you know these kind of things are have not really picked up so what people are doing is that they are turning their attention to foreign countries so there you can find many many different types of investors who will be willing uh that to develop this technology and sell it to them that is uh, what i can guarantee to you that if you work hard then you develop such a technology then you can do it and already there are many people in america who are interested in outsourcing the work here in pakistan uh to get their jobs done and i will guarantee you that may there are many projects which are based now on deep learning many many projects which are now based on deep learning i personally know a few situations that's why i am uh, telling you about this so it has mostly to do with image processing data in the case of like for example automatic car driving so tesla is doing a lot of research google is doing a lot of research in these technologies and there are different companies which has sprung up and who want to go into this space because in america you have the option to you know to uh, to to work on such a kind of things so you develop the technology here and you try to sell it abroad in the gulf states for example in saudi uh, in uae usa so you never know what's going to happen uh, dr tarik one more question uh, yeah. this particular course ke andar kya hum edge tech ed, processing on the edge ka topic cover kar rahe honge like most of the things discussed so far for instance car jis tarah images ko istemal kar rahi hai navigate karne ke liye hmm. that is not happening on the cloud that is happening on the on the edge right on the spot security ki jo for instance hai breaches wo bhi isi tarah hum dekh rahe honge ke wo ha we will we will go through the basic uh, image processing algorithms theek okay, hai but uh, that will only be a very short primer because we we got to cover 
uh, very complicated algorithms. You need to understand how they are working from the inside. और फिर उनकी हमें जाहिर सी बात है फिर इम्प्लीमेंटेशन करके हमें उसकी वर्थ भी देखनी होगी कि हाउ डज इट ऑल हैपन इट इज नॉट नॉट इजी स्टफ बट इट इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग तो वी विल हम कर लेंगे मैंने आई डिड नॉट इंटेंड टू इंक्लूड दिस थिंग बट आई विल इंक्लूड इट आई जस्ट गिव अ शॉर्ट प्राइमर लाइक वन टू टू आवर्स ऑन द डिफरेंट इमेज प्रोसेसिंग टेक्निक्स दैट कैन बी यूज और अब तो सारा काम जो हो रहा है वो पाइथन के अंदर वी आर यूजिंग दैट द केरास प्लेटफॉर्म द केरास एपीआई इज बीइंग यूज्ड टू आई थिंक नो टेंसर फ्लो इज बीइंग यूज्ड व्हिच इनकॉर्पोरेट्स केरास ठीक है तो टेंस केरास इज नाउ इनकॉर्पोरेटेड विद इन टेंसर फ्लो व्हिच इज फ्रॉम गूगल एंड यू कैन यूज दिस यू कैन यूज टेंसर फ्लो नाउ टू जस्ट डू द बेसिक डीप लर्निंग एल्गोरिथम सो they have the basic api built up and we just have to call the functions like like scikit learn so we now have the tensor flow library so keras was something keras was a very good uh, deep learning library but it is now incorporated within tensor flow which is from google uh, besides that you also have uh, pytorch that's also in the library you also have cafe so these are the three libraries which you can use for doing deep learning Okay, so it's already there. You don't need to write your own algorithms. You can find lots of stuff there. So you said PyTorch Cafe, and what was the third? Uh, PyTorch Cafe and TensorFlow. TensorFlow is the main one, which is from Google. Okay, so now let's see, Basim, uh, please. So. this is something this is another application that you can use you know this is you can you can create your own problems like right? you input the images of a house and uh, you can just predict the price of uh, you know based on the furnishing based on the sizes you can see so the point is that you know image when you say okay, you can use image processing to do that you know for example in such a room you got like maybe 20 to 25 different types of objects right so image processing can help you say okay okay yaar i can see this is one thing this is one thing maybe it is going to say this is whole one whole thing okay this is one whole thing maybe it is not able to distinguish this box and these bottles separately and it's going to say yaar this is one whole thing maybe this is not one whole thing right so the power of image processing is very limited then it will distinguish kar lega matlab wo border kya kehte hain border pakad lega bade spoon se uske second order gradient ke through bade spoon se sare edges pakad lega to wo jo khidkiyan vidkiya lega pakad lega lekin ha fir bhi aapki baat se relevant utni hi rahegi ha matlab dekhe edge what i'm trying to say is ke kisi cheez ko pakad lena edge detect karke that is not what we are interested in right our our goal is not to is not to detect the different objects which are there what about this this whole wall that is part of the whole game right that's part of the room if i have to make a prediction such as this one i need to have knowledge of the walls as well so maybe i don't need to segment anything maybe the algorithm does not need a segmentation in this case maybe it just needs some denoising algorithm so we we do not know even we do not know ki which type of image processing technique i i want to use unless i know what what i am doing so if even agar aap kehte hain ki wo sab cheeze pakad lega to uske baad kya karna hai theek hai you yes, have to use that data to make a prediction right ab main aapko batata hu ki what happens in deep learning deep learning what it is all about is that what happens is ki if i discretize this image So let's say that is one zero two four into seven sixty eight. I think which is the typical image size. Okay. So this is going to create a data set with this many columns. Okay. so every image is going to be discretized into a data set which is this many columns 
and uh, what what is going to be the value of an image for these so many different columns is going to be just the pixel value on or off okay so whether that value is there or not it can also be a value between 0 and 1 depending if you are taking the density so for example the pixels which are related to uh, these walls they can have a low value okay the pixels related to these bottles they can have some high value similarly the darker areas can have bigger values of the pixels blah 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 okay so now i give this uh, i have let's say 1000 images so i have 1000 rows and i have these many columns okay so that's that's uh, like in hundred thousands of columns and probably thousands of images so what I want the system to do, I want the system to detect what is inside the room and then you know decide on a price by seeing the different images. So I can have maybe uh, 15 images of each room and based on those 15 images, it is going to make a prediction regarding the price of that house. That's a very complicated problem. You can discover similar problems also. So what happens is that, what is the, what does deep learning actually do? We know it is an artificial neural network. So I've told you that it's a big artificial neural network. So I'm going to have an input layer. I might have, you know, two or three or four hidden layers. And then I will, I'm going to have this, let's say this is the output layer. I have these three hidden layers. And I have this input layer. And in this layer, this layer can be of different types of, uh, you know, it can do different types of processing. So let's assume it's a normal layer. So let's say I have 50 neurons here. I have 100 neurons here and I have 50 neurons here. And all of these are connected to each other. Right? So deep learning ka maksad kya hai? What does it do? It actually deep learning actually extracts the features you can see the appropriate features from let's say I call it the big data or you can call it the deep data okay it extracts the appropriate features from big data or deep data which can be useful for making a good prediction or any analysis. So this is called representational learning. Okay. Now, where you have so many hundred thousands of columns or thousands of columns, what is deep learning? Do? Deep learning is actually a feature selection process. What is deep learning? Deep learning actually helps you select the features. That is the main purpose of deep learning. Deep learning ka jo asal kaam hai wo yehi hai ki it is actually a feature selected. Because in image data, in textual data, in video data, in speech data, you have thousands of features, but you do not know ki which features are important for me to make a selection, to make a prediction. Or in this, that's why I'm saying ki being able to detect these different images by saying ki, yaar, yes ka border hai, yes, this is the border for this, the border, border for that, it might not be useful for me because the deep learning algorithm is going to take the whole image in a discretized way in one row. So one row is one image. It is going to take the whole image together with hundred thousands of possible values and it is going to decide with what are the features which are relevant to make a prediction about this room. So some features could be regarding this bottle, some features could be regarding this floor, which could be important, some features could be regarding this window, and that is it. This, these might be the important set of features. So deep learning is actually a feature selector, and we call it representational learning because uh, features are actually representations. So we call deep learning representational learning. It is able to uh, detect uh, those particular areas uh, which generate your brain activity. For example, uh, 
your brain is very large right but there is a small amount of information uh, which is able to generate your thoughts so very a, a few areas of your brain are actually working very very fast which through which you think and not the whole 100% brain is not active all of us know that so the same concept is being used here that we assume that all the features are not required it is not required to make an image segmentation we just have to we just let this convolution neural network or auto encoder or whatever we are seeing we let the algorithm select the features itself in an unsupervised manner hum usko koi guidance nahi de rahe hote ke ye feature le lo we are not guiding it the algorithm in any way we are just giving the information to the algorithm ke this these are the features of the images now select the most relevant why not to make a prediction about this image Okay, so it's it's actually called sir, representational learning. Sir, एक सवाल है. जी. Sir, आपने mention किया uh, appropriate features select करता है deep learning जो है. तो ये appropriate features uh, के लिए it will obviously have some sort of a training data set to uh, to learn from basically. Am I correct? Obviously, yeah. So you can have supervised learning and deep learning also. you can have unsupervised learning as well and you can also have semi supervised learning mera yahan pe sawal hai yahan par aap se log hai main ya aap awaaz thodi kam aa rahi hai please ji ji acha sir aa rahi hai ji ji acha sir mujhe jo sawal ye puchna hai ki aapne bola feature selection ya feature based identification mein madad karta hai na ye deep learning theek hai to mera sawal ye hai ki is it possible कि डीप लर्निंग एल्गोरिथम एक्चुअली हमें भी वो फीचर्स बता दे एट द एंड ऑफ इट्स पूरा मतलब ट्रेनिंग साइकिल ठीक है कि भी यार अच्छा इस रूम को जज करते वक्त मैंने जो है ना स्केलेट से पंखा या इस पर्टिकुलर सेट ऑफ पिक्सेल्स को देखा इसको जज करते हुए प्राइस या दीस वर द मोस्ट बिगेस्ट कंट्रीब्यूटर्स टू द रिजल्ट समथिंग जो हम लोगों को एज एन रिपीटेटिव रिजल्ट एज अ ह्यूमंस खुद बनाने की कोशिश मतलब मदद करे कि भाई अगर मैं अगर लेट्स से ह्यूमन कभी कोई चीज प्राइस आइडेंटिफाई करता हूँ मैं फर्नीचर को देख रहा होता हूँ उसकी ब्रांड न्यू मतलब कितना न्यू है उसको देख रहा होता हूँ उसके आर्किटेक्चर को एस्थेटिक्स को देख रहा होता हूँ ठीक है ये एज ए ह्यूमन बींग मैं इस तरह सेस कर रहा होता हूँ डीप लर्निंग ने भी किसी थोड़ा सा ऑब्जेक्टिव स्टाइल से असेस किया है तो क्या वो हमें बता सकता है कि वो किस तरीके से उसने असेस किया जी आपने अच्छा सवाल पूछा मैं आपको इसका जवाब देता हूँ तो हेयर इज अ टिपिकल सिनेरियो फॉर एन आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरल नेटवर्क इन डीप लर्निंग द नंबर ऑफ हिडन लेयर्स इज मोर देन वन टिपिकली सही है तो in the normal artificial neural network you are using just a single hidden layer in most cases which is the mlp you must be knowing about this algorithm right multi layer perceptron so we are going to do ann's in in concrete detail in from in on in the friday class in charge so don't worry you will understand what what these things are in mlp you just have typically one hidden layer in deep learning you are supposed to have more than one so to answer your question what i am doing here that i am giving pixel level information to the input layer sahi hai i am giving pixel level information to the input layer so when we talk about pixels so pixels mein information becomes very very granular so it is not possible to talk about edges and all those things in pixels right when i am giving you pixel data so everything is all zoomed out all spread out right there is there are no edges there are no objects everything is at the pixel level now i give it to this hidden layer which is the main uh, work horse that we have to work with this is the output layer what happens here is that i told you that we are doing representational learning okay so what happens is that it tries to learn in a hierarchy so let me just write it down okay the hidden layers 
in our deep learning architecture are first going to detect low level features. For example, edges of objects in an image. Okay. From these low level features, the deep learning architecture will build higher level features or representations of killing. For example, object shapes. From these, deep learning architecture will build even higher level representations. For example, cars, rooms, mountains, etc. How it happens? So, you ask the question, ki, is it possible to actually identify the features? I am giving you the answer, ki, actually the features, you have broken up your image into thousands of pixels and you are given the pixel data to the input layer. When the pixel data enters these architecture of hidden layers, this, this is the main deep learning uh, architecture. So the job of the hidden layers is to do this. That's what it does. When you're talking about the image data, so or any data, or any data, it tries to detect the small, small things, and from those small things, it tries to detect bigger things which are made up of, of those small things, and so on and so forth. So it builds up a hierarchy. Now, what happens is that there is a mathematical, you know, there's a lot of maths which goes here. So every hidden layer has neurons. When you give this input data to the first hidden layer, so that gets transformed. At every neuron, I have an activation function, which transforms the data completely. So now from here, when it travels from here to this hidden layer, it transforms that even more. So now at this stage, your original features are gone. They are not there anymore. They are transformed in a very, very strange way, right? So much mass has gone here. And when the, when the data comes out here and goes to the output layer, so it is completely transformed. And the output layer is able to make a prediction that, okay, this is a room, this is a car, this is a hen, this is a cat, whatever, or a dog, whatever, okay? So, so it is not possible to acquire information, minute information about the images, what are the features of features mere kaam ke the? The point of using deep learning is to actually absolve yourself from that responsibility. Even if you get to know what the features say, so how is that going to help you? Because your, your main goal is not to understand the features. Your main goal is to understand ke, uh, whether I'm able to make a prediction or not. That's what you want to see. Okay? If you make a prediction, G. सर मेरे सवाल ये है कि अभी ठीक है सर बात सही है कि हमने इनिशियली तो हम प्रोडक्शन के लिए कर रहे हैं काम ठीक है एंड दैट इज वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द एंटायर प्रोसेस ठीक है सर फॉर द पर्पसेस ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग ठीक है कि यार जो जिस एक थॉट प्रोसेस होता है ना एक होता है भी बंदे ने रिजल्ट्स निकाल लिए वेरी गुड शाबाश लेकिन एक होता है यार उसने किस थॉट प्रोसेस के तहत वो रिजल्ट्स निकाले ठीक है ताकि हम लोग भी अच्छा नॉर्मल ह्यूमंस भी असेस कर सके यार कि हम लेट्स से रियल एस्टेट एजेंट्स हैं ठीक है वो भी असेस करना चाहते हैं क्या हो सकता है हम कोई चीज मिस कर जाते हैं जो लेट्स से हमें भी अपनी मतलब लेनी चाहिए इनटू अकाउंट लेट्स से पंखे का या एस्थेटिक्स तो ऐसी चीज है फाइनल कि जो लोग प्राइस डिसाइड करते हैं इस्तेमाल करते हैं जो हम नहीं देखते ठीक है लेकिन न्यूरो नेटवर्क ने पकड़ लिए वो चीज और प्राइस के साथ मतलब उसको मैच भी कर लिया या और द अदर वे अराउंड के न्यूरो नेटवर्क ने कोई ऐसी अब्सर्ड चीज देखी है कि हमें पता है लाजमी के और उससे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता और वी वांट टू समहाउ रिमूव दैट और कोई ऐसा मॉडल बिल्ड करना चाहते हैं जहां पे वो चीज हमें पक्का हो कि नहीं हम इस्तेमाल कर सकते ठीक है 
लेट से फ्लोरिंग का अगर बिल्ड क्वालिटी के अंदर लेट से इस्तेमाल करता है जस्ट एग्जाम्पल फ्लोरिंग की बिल्ड क्वालिटी इस्तेमाल कर रहा है एज ए फीचर ठीक है फॉर असर्टनिंग द प्राइस ऑफ द हाउस ठीक है एंड वी डोंट वॉन्ट दैट हम नहीं चाहते कि यार वो इस फीचर को किसी सूरत भी इस्तेमाल करे चाहे उसको सही रिजल्ट निकाल रहा है गलत रिजल्ट निकाल रहा है एक वजह कि अब हमें क्यों जानना है अच्छा दूसरी वजह सर ये है दूसरी चीज एक्चुअली सवाल है वजह नहीं है कि सर आपने बोला फंक्शन अप्लाई कर रहा है तो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हो रही है फर्स्ट एयर से ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन चले लेन है एक बहुत ट्रांसफॉर्म ठीक है एक रिजल्ट आया एंड मैंने उस पर जी एक्स का एक और फंक्शन लगाया एक और ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हो गई एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा ठीक है अब मेरा सवाल ये है कि हर फंक्शन अगर इन सारे ही फंक्शन का हम इन्वर्स निकाल लें ठीक है इफ वी जस्ट गो बैक दी अदर वे और हर फंक्शन जो हमने ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन का लगाया उसका इन्वर्स लगाते जाए जो आउटपुट फाइनली आ रहा है उससे हम ये भी असर्टेन एंड ऑफ द डे बैक पे मतलब रिजल्ट निकाल सकता है कि इसने एक्चुअली ये पिक्सल्स मैं ये नहीं बोल रहा फीचर्स मैं बोल रहा हूँ इस इमेज की ये पिक्सल नंबर वन टू थ्री फोर टेन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन अच्छा वन थाउजेंड वन वन थाउजेंड टू ये जो कॉलम्स में इसके लिए आप आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं ये इस्तेमाल किए बाकी वो उसका सेंस बनाना नहीं बनाना वो तो इंसान का काम है करके इज इट सेंसिबल एनफ टू बी यूज एज इट इज लेकिन मतलब एटलीस्ट हमें इन्वर्स लगा के ये तो बता दे यार ये पिक्सल्स की वैल्यूज ये कॉलम्स थे और यहाँ पे हमने जो है ना क्या कहते हैं इस्तेमाल किए थे मैंने अपने बनाने के लिए ये सवाल है देखें आई विल ट्राई टू आंसर यू क्वेश्चन इन टू वेज द फर्स्ट रिस्पॉन्स इज दैट इफ यू आर सेंसिटिव अबाउट योर फीचर्स राइट यू वॉन्ट टू नो अबाउट दैम and you are looking for a problem like house prediction or sorry house price prediction right so in the real estate scenario you can work with small data because real estate data is actually not big data there are not millions of houses to to cater for and for a particular house there are not millions of attributes so you might be having like maybe 15 to 20 very strong attributes and you might be having data like maybe 20000 rows or something like that in so in other words you convert your problem to a typical machine learning problem and from there you can apply the feature selection methods to get a ranking for your features like using the random forest feature selection method or the xt boost feature selection method so they will rank your features according to bagging or boosting uh experiments and typically those ratings are very reliable so then in that case i think that is a much much better solution than what you are uh then you know doing the same thing using deep learning you do deep learning when you want to use it so if you are sensitive about your features and you can convert your problem to a traditional machine learning problem then i think you should do that if you want to know more about your features that is always a good sign and in most uh, applications of machine learning that we are looking at right now that's what we are interested in right maybe even in healthcare even in uh, uh, you know sales prediction we are looking to get the features that what are the more important features who are which are highly correlated when you talk about image when you talk about image data and speech data and video data uh, excuse me just take that so uh, my point is that when we are working with image data then uh, there is for me you know there is uh, very little motivation to know about the pixels uh, that are actually contributing to that if you are looking at the pixel data you know you know we can the point is that i have typically thousands of images to train the deep learning architecture for one particular deep learning application thousands of images could be required so if i start to micromanage each image at the pixel level then it is it is going to be very difficult for me to you know uh get that information to to actually solve the problem which i want to solve theek hai samajh mari baat ki ke if i want to if i want to discover everything at the pixel level then it is better for me to cast this problem in the machine learning scenario mm-hmm. because i am using deep learning not for image processing i am using deep learning for image classification or object detection with a probabilistic output 
so yeah, i am basically doing machine learning with a feature selector as a deep learning algorithm that's what i'm doing ab ye jo aapke convolution neural networks hain what what do they do they have a convolutional layer they have a pooling layer and there are different combinations of these layers together so what does that do that basically helps you generalize your pixels into another space so you have a huge space of uh, data in which you have many many pixels so it is going to convert that space to a very small space which you can use in a, any machine learning algorithm to make a prediction about the data so i just this is fun हाँ सर ये वाला सवाल पहले सवाल का तो सर हो गया लेकिन सर दूसरे सवाल का वो जो अगर मैं सिंपल एम एल पी इस्तेमाल कर रहा हूँ एक दो लेयर्स डाल के और उसमें हर लेयर में मुझे पता है ये वाला ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फंक्शन अप्लाई हो रहा है तो क्या इज इट नॉट पॉसिबल कि मैं हर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फंक्शन का इनवर्स अगर निकाल लूँ ठीक है तो मैं आउटपुट डेटा से वापस इनपुट डेटा पे लेकर आ जाऊँ जस्ट फॉर क्रियोसिटीज से मतलब नॉट फॉर प्रैक्टिकलिटी से जस्ट फॉर क्रियोसिटीज से इट इज पॉसिबल it is possible to do that lekin but i am trying to say is ke uh, our purpose in doing deep learning is to go the other way the the, the reason i am using deep learning is i trust deep learning to select the features for me and i am not interested because i am more interested in what happens at the end which is a, a very complicated task aam taur pe theek hai so to to get an image in which it is able to efficiently recognize all the trucks and the buses which is what i want to do if i want to develop a software which is able to calculate the traffic density at any point on the road so i want to i want the output to be good so in that case i am not really concerned that much ke which features are important because the image is a huge uh, complicated piece of data image contains thousands of pixels so even if i am able to discover that some some part of the image is is good for me that is typically a business knowledge which you will already know understand for example in the case of real estate you will know ke kamre ka size matters a lot theek hai and the the type of furnishing matters a lot so you already have that business knowledge so doing the inverse transform and you know uh, going backwards to detect the actual is this there that just beats the purpose you can try to do that yourself or you can try to you know google up if whether someone has done this or not but i am using deep learning for feature selection so why would i want to do an inverse to go to that pixel level deep learning is already doing the feature selection for me but what i wanted to tell you was that due to the use of these activation functions ye jo activation functions ab use karte hain activation functions so they transform the data into another mathematical space so you are in space let's say x you are going to go to a space x bar it's a different space like we were talking about the sampling scenario in uh, in machine learning 2 in the first lecture so it's a different space and this one is a different space altogether and all the time when you are moving from one space to another space what you are doing is that you are actually detecting hierarchically the features of the image like i told you the example here so you first detect the low level features then you detect high level features then you detect high level features and finally you detect the whole object but it is not actually the same pixel that is there so that the whole scenario changes when you are inside the deep learning algorithm and you are not concerned because in this particular space in this particular space you have you can have easily thousands of different hyperparameters you can have thousands of weights you can have hundreds of parameters to tune like biases like the the decay rate the learning rate the momentum the batch normalization how many layers you want to make so there could be hundreds of different decisions that you want to make so your concern is not actually the fact ke which point at the image is more important for me If that is a scenario, then you should go for the traditional machine learning algorithms, which can help you with this in a better way. This thing is not designed to do that. Do you understand? G. G. Sir, ha, apne jawab de diya. Okay. Okay. So this is one problem, which is the price of a skew from its picture so this is a complicated problem but you know when you when you go to a superstore 
and you take a picture of any product, so it should tell you the price. That requires deep learning. Okay, that's not easy. You can try to work on that. So with, this is what we already talked about. This is also not easy. Um, nowadays we are, in fact, in Pakistan, we are having these requirements to detect uh, when you when I give someone my NIC, so they're going to scan it and recognize whether I'm that same same person or not. Okay, so nowadays in Pakistan, even we are having these applications, and uh, because uh, you know, I know some applications in which these the people are doing some sort some some uh, this sort of stuff, and uh, therefore this is all, this is an important activity that that needs to be actually catered for. So you can you can think about many many projects from this. I don't know right now kya kya ho sakta hai, but you can you can Google up and you can look up many projects which can be related to this. Usme ye na kijega class attendance because class attendance is is a sort of a useless application. Okay, whether I can take the attendance in just one or two minutes or three minutes, why do I need a camera to detect the face of the students? So this is uh, more useful for you know the scenarios of uh, surveillance or uh, security. Okay. Yeah. So now this is something which is really important. Um, we talked about this. Uh, we saw these Arima models in the last course, and you guys worked quite a lot on that. Um, there are a few deep learning algorithms which are primarily derived from the recurrent neural networks. So one of the more famous ones is the LSTM, long short term memory. It's a recurrent neural network. Uh, it is better than Arima because it is able to remember a large amount of history. So if you remember K, uh, in Arima models, uh, what we did was that we were basically forecasting based on the previous timestamps or the previous two or three lags. But uh, the LSTM is able to remember uh, a large amount of history uh, because of the way it is structured. So LSTM can generate much, much better predictions of stocks and, you know, for the people who play with stocks, like many economists are, you know, are more interested in this stock forecasting stuff. So for them, LSTM is definitely a better choice than Arima models. And LSTM also has now has many extensions that will study. Uh, for example, we have attention networks. We are inshallah not going to be sparing any expense. We are not going to spare anything. We are going to study each and everything, inshallah. Uh, convolution neural networks ki jo space hai, that is huge. I mean, there are so many things. But we are going to study the basic architecture of the convolution neural network and some of its useful extensions. Okay. So convolution neural network is one type of deep learning application or algorithm. Recurrent neural network is an other type which is primarily used for sequence forecasting. Just may text uh, text analytics ka bahut zyada usme contribution has much to do with text analytics. So all kinds of NLP uh, algorithms and those things they are typically being solved using uh, recurrent neural networks, primarily the LSTM. But there are other as well, like gated recurrent unit. Okay, that is also uh, one of the more famous ones, and there might be others. So in this, we also have the bi-directional LSTM, and you know it has five or six different flavors. So that is uh, something that you can try it out yourself. So you can have you can have a project in which you can compare the performance of LSTM with Arima on good pure economical indicator data. Or just me, you have fun. I work hard, so you can analyze and see ke, oh, how what is the performance. So LSTM typically performs very good. Yeah. So this is the sequence uh, prediction in uh, bioinformatics. So here you can say ke, you just uh, have this embedding of your gene or DNA, 
and you just uh, put the embeddings here. It goes through convolution neural network. Then it goes through an LSTM layer. So I got two layers. One is the convolution layer to extract the features. And then I have this uh, LSTM layer to remember the history. And then I can make a prediction about the sequence. Okay. I can predict the next DNA sequence uh, based on these two algorithms. You can see here in this architecture, two things are being used at the same time. So that makes the things really complicated. Okay. But uh, you know, you you definitely cannot keep track in this situation okay, what happens at the neuron level. You don't care. So you might be having like maybe uh, maybe you are having 600 neurons here overall. And maybe here you are definitely having like maybe 2,000, 3,500 neurons. So overall here, overall I might be having 4,000 neurons. And at each neuron I'm having an activation layer. I have, I'm having a bias. So it's, you, you, can't, you can't do the inverse and go back. It's not that much easy. It's very difficult to manage. So you're, you're more interested in what happens here, which is also difficult. Traffic sign prediction. That's uh, an important also for automatic driving. So you can just detect the speed limit. So we have had several successful applications of this and people are doing, uh, you know, they are, they, are, they are actually using this sort of stuff. So in this way, you can also think about other algorithms that you can have, okay. Text summarizer, Noor Mukaddam from Dawn. Yeah, but this can be a potential project that on this girl, you are having so many different articles. He can, talking about many, many different types of things. So I can all merge them together in one long article, and then I can just use some uh, text summarization NLP using neural networks or recurrent neural network to develop a summary of the whole game. Yeah. So that is also something which is, uh, you know, which is important because I don't want to read all the news. I just want to read the summary of the news. So this is not easy. So people are working on this as well. <coughs> Uh, chatbots, definitely one of the more famous applications of uh, deep learning. Uh, chatbots have to use deep learning because they have to interact with human people on textual uh, chat. So they have to understand that textual chat, they have to make a prediction about the response. So it is not easy. You know, you might need to use everything. You see, if you see here in a typical application, you can use the from the deep learning, you can use retrieval based neural network and generation based neural network. Uh, for the NLP, you're using the long short term memory, which is also part of deep learning. Uh, and you're also using sequence to sequence prediction, which is also part of deep learning. Uh, and here you can use also the multi-layer perceptron for some, for some other task. And you also using convolution, so you're using convolution neural network, using LSTM, you're using generation-based network, retrieval-based neural network. So developing a chatbot is, is a difficult task if you want to make sure that you are doing it in a good way. So there is one other application. Uh, this is something which is face aging. Uh, so you can, you can uh, try to see uh, what you're gonna look like in the next 15 years. And this is a sort of algorithm which is called the generative model. So the deep learning algorithm can generate different types of data. So uh, you probably read about the random number generators, right? Random number generators. So every time you ask it, it's going to generate a number for you. So similarly, if I train some particular deep learning algorithms on one type of data, whether it is uh, company data or images data. And then I ask the system to generate the similar images, so it will generate similar data or images. So there, there, are, there are examples of uh, fictitious faces which have never existed. So you can see here that here it is, it's an aging gap, so how I'm going to look like in the next 50 years. So this is also quite possible. So human face generation, uh, in this case, this girl does not exist. 
So, but I've combined three pictures to generate this particular image. So there is no girl like this, and there are many boys' images as well. Uh, I was not able to find some good ones. So you can generate faces like this. So this could have repercussions. So this this could might not be allowed, you know, because there could be fake face faces you can use for some uh, malpractices or some bad things. But uh, you can also think about some good applications for this. Yeah, so generate the buildings shapes with sorry. Sir, जो deep fakes बनती हैं ये deep learning से through ही बनती हैं या जैसा भी आपने जो पिछली example थी उसके through ही वो जो deep fake images videos बनती हैं. जी जी ये deep learning से ही बनती है. I can generate images. तो लेकिन हमारा जो काम है ना वही एक्चुअली मैं तो पर्सनली इमेजेस पे काम नहीं करता आई वर्क विद डेटा राइट सो व्हाट वी आर वर्किंग टू डू इज दैट इफ आई ट्रेन द डीप लर्निंग एल्गोरिथम ऑन माय प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इफ आई ट्रेन द डीप लर्निंग एल्गोरिथम ऑन माय ट्रेनिंग डेटा व्हिच इज माय जॉइंट प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी फंक्शन देन द जनरेटिव मॉडल कैन स्टार्ट टू जनरेट द डेटा व्हिच इज वेरी सिमिलर टू माय ट्रेनिंग डेटा so in this way i can do data augmentation you understand ki main apne data ko i can augment the data or increase the data if i teach the deep learning algorithm the density of my data current data similarly if i teach my deep learning algorithm the density of my images it is going to generate similar images to your face or anybody else's face uh generate the building shapes which conserve energy so that's a very complicated deep learning problem so if you are up to the challenge then you should do that you need a good data set you need lots of maths on your hand and then you can use that to generate these type of shapes this is not easy this is definitely a supervised learning problem but isme aapko you will not get that much data that much easily you will have to see theek okay? hai there are other uh, applications as well hand written text recognition generate images of smart city architectures traffic density prediction uh, prediction of the next crime location and type of the crime as well cancer parkinson alzheimer disease detection predicting the next catastrophe sign language recognition and translation generate forecast for different types of time series so all of these are examples of basically the uh, uh deep learning application so you got data for images speech uh you know this telemarketing so you can you can have a machine which recognizes the voice of the customers uh, who have called you and then it can try to serve the customers based on their needs so all of these are applications primarily of deep learning so uh, we have seen the applications now i think you understand basically what it is doing so deep learning is part of a broader family of machine learning methods based on artificial neural networks with representational learning okay now you understand what this is all about learning can be supervised semi supervised or unsupervised as in the case of machine learning okay semi supervised means semi -supervised that we have reinforcement here yeah we also have deep reinforcement learning we, we, we do have that uh, we are going to be doing reinforcement learning in uh, ml2 so you can then couple up with that maybe you can do a project on deep reinforcement learning but it's uh, it's uh, going to be a bit complicated semi supervised ka matlab ye hota hai ki what it means is that you have uh, basically data which is not that much data labeled data so it's a very limited type of labeled data and mostly the data is unlabeled like maybe 90% rows are unlabeled only 10% rows have the label with you because labeling the data is not easy it is an expensive exercise so you use that 10% data to generate labels for the 90% data so that generation algorithm basically falls under the ambit of semi supervised algorithm 
So we will we'll, we'll be touching this topic as well. You will, will have to see how this works out. So deep learning architectures, we are going to be primarily interested in deep neural networks, but we also have these deep belief networks, which are primarily the restricted Boltzmann machine by Jeffrey Hinton. So that is one type of a generative model, okay? Uh, then we have deep RL, recurrent neural networks. So I just told you about them and convolution neural networks have been applied for computer vision. We have seen the application speech recognition, NLP, machine translation. That means translating from one language to another language, bioinformatics, drug design, medical image analysis, material inspection and board game programs. Uh, where they have produced results surpassing human expert performance sometimes. Yeah. So now we have a good foundation for deep learning. Uh, we know the history of artificial neural networks, what they do, and but we're going to read the history again in the next class you know, on the coming Friday. Dr. Tarinam, GANs cover Karim? G. GANs cover Karinge. GAN is a generative model. Uh, we have three generative models to cover restricted Boltzmann machines, um, autoencoders, uh, and generative adversarial networks. So these are the three generative models we have to cover. And in the recurrent scenario, we have to cover three or four different algorithms related to LSTM. And uh, we also have to cover the convolution neural networks and there are a few variants which are there. That is the basic stuff, but we we there are also other algorithms that we need to cover. So deep learning is a class of machine learning algorithms that uses multiple layers. That's what I showed you to progressively extract higher level features from the raw input. I just explained that to you, right, on the whiteboard. Okay, start with the lower level features and then hierarchically use those lower level features to discover more and more high level features. For example, in image processing, lower layers may identify edges while higher layers may identify the concepts related to a human, such as digits or letters or faces. So it's all, it all builds up. You see here, here's how it happens. You give it the image of an elephant. Okay, so it's, first of all, it is broken up like this, then it builds up like this. Then it learns this, and then finally it learns this in the final list. Recognize that it's an elephant. So these are all the features that is learning. So most modern DL models are based on ANN, especially convolutional networks. Uh, although they can also include propositional formulas uh, or latent, uh, sorry about that. Organized layer wise in deep generative models such as nodes in a deep belief network and deep Boltzmann machines. So that is the main thing. We'll see the detail later on. Okay, so you should get ready for the Friday class. And uh, the stuff that we missed out today, we're going to be covering up that. Don't worry, you also I have to discuss the course outline. I've basically told you the sir, course. Uh, sir, Agliff, uh, coming Friday, online class or physical? Uh, it's going to be, I think, a physical class because lockdown is going to be But uh, if the point is that uh, we are going to have a recorded session as well. Okay, sir. If you change, you will have a down soon. So, uh, there are a few people which you need to understand. Which you need to know about. This is one of the main guys, Yoshio, Yoshua Benjio. Okay, he is uh, the pioneer of deep learning and he has lots and lots of uh, uh, contributions to that field. The other guy that you need to know is this Jeffrey Hinton. Jeffrey Hinton is also, this is the guy who discovered the restricted Boltzmann machines. Uh, and the third person is uh, basically Jan Likan. So this, I think, is in Facebook right now. Uh, I, I do think it's in Facebook. 
so he's he's also he's the one who uh, basically these three guys started the field aap is tarah samajh le so they are doing lots and lots of good research and the uh, one other guy that you need to know who is not that much uh ah this is the guy actually this guy is from europe and the other guys are from usa and america uh, and canada so i think uh, there is some uh, there is some altercation between them this is the guy who invented the lstm lstm was his invention uh and it's it's used in the whole world right now but he was never recognized that much by the us community so that's a sort of uh, it's a, it's a pity but he is he is a very very he is a very very good researcher so he has done lots and lots of stuff regarding this called the long short term memory so this is the discovery of uh, james spend huber yeah so he actually they have some sort of a differences in there but he's a very famous person so you need to that they have their own research group so they are the ones who are doing stuff and other guy is a famous one is uh, andrew ng sir sabko pata hai uska shayad ha he is also into deep learning he is uh, very much into deep learning now so he was at a deep learning pe he is working so you can just uh, follow what he is doing so You you can't the the things that they are working on they can cannot be done now without deep learning. Okay. And uh, the um what you need to understand right now is uh, the APIs that are there. So TensorFlow is the main API that you need to be looking for. Um, so it's uh, basically for training and inference of deep neural networks. so it is it is the language was developed by google the google brain jis pe abhi andrew ng wagara kaam kar rahe hain theek hai so it's being discovered by a google brain for quite of i think there's been some years now like 5 years yeah so it's been different platforms or so it's uh, it's a great language it's a great api so you can look this up tensor processing unit inka apna hi pura mamla hai usko change karna so yeah it uses gpu So it applies this different style. This is also another application. Okay, you take one image and apply its style to another image, neural style. So it apply a new style to this image. So it it becomes your look, the picture changes completely. So there are many many other applications that you can think of. And uh, the other API that you need to see is I think Cafe. Yeah, so this is the Cafe software library for deep learning. You can use that as well. So it was developed in Berkeley. This is also famous. So Cafe is something that we can use. Uh, and the third one, I think, is uh, which one was it? TensorFlow Cafe and uh, Keras is already part of TensorFlow. PyTorch. Sorry. Ah, PyTorch. PyTorch. PyTorch is one here. uh keras acts as an interface for the tensorflow library so keras is now there as a part of tensorflow so they are all combined together okay uh so this is the keras.io but now it is also part of tensorflow and uh, the, the the last one is pytorch you need to be looking at Yeah, so it's used for computer vision and NLP. So it's it's developed by Facebook's AI research lab. The PyTorch is from Facebook at Fair. Ah, uh, but I I think we can do with TensorFlow. Ah, uh, so how many people? How many of you people have GPUs? I have a low power GPU. Like Sorry? GTX. I have a GTX series CPU, but it's not the latest version. Like it's. It's the seven series, GTX, NVIDIA GTX. Yeah, NVIDIA GTX. So uh, I will recommend that those of you who can arrange a GPU will be very good. Uh, it's uh, you got to, you know, if you can make an investment, that's good. Or we can have some research fund for that. I have my lab as well. 
and uh, i can ask the iba to give us some space on the cloud as well i can ask iba to you know uh, pay for this cloud uh, i am going to do an exercise very soon regarding this uh, but until that happens you can use my lab okay for doing spend the main thing is the project so you primarily need it for the project sir वैसे just as a curious question ke agar jaisa mere paas sir i don't have a gpu with me but i have a xeon series processor and a dual processor at that theek hai so i have basically a 24 core processor in effectiveness theek hai to and yes i think 32 gb ram bhi hoga iske sath sath so this is a server grade everything is server grade it's a dell server so if i have that to कितना कम मस्ता होगा मुझे एस कंपेयर टू हैविंग अ जीपीयू जो नॉर्मल पीसी के अंदर जीपीयू मतलब कैन आई कवर इट विद द सर्वर ग्रेड हार्डवेयर अह इफ यू हैव अ लाइक 8 जनरेशन और 9 जनरेशन मशीन और द 10 जनरेशन मशीन विद अ गुड फ्रीक्वेंसी अगर उसकी प्रोसेसर स्पीड अच्छी है तो डिफरेंस तो पड़ देगा डिफरेंस तो पड़ेगा देयर विल बी अ डिफरेंस बट इट विल नॉट हैंग एट लीस्ट सही है वो तो for the assignments i guess it's not going to do that much care it's not going to make that much of a difference if you have a good machine with you otherwise it might hang when talk about more uh, tough models like uh, uh, auto encoders and uh, you know when you want to generate image data then it becomes difficult otherwise it it can handle it can handle yeah but i will just make a recommendation that those of you who can arrange the gpu it's uh, yeah this can be a phd level course those of you who can arrange the gpu it will be good theek okay, hai so if you want to do if you want to make a career in deep learning then it is better to have a a laptop with a gpu it's not okay nowadays it might be expensive but before it was not that much expensive otherwise we also have this option of colab with colab you can get the gpu but it typically it might not be able it might not be good for a project it might be good for some assignment that i give but not good for a project so i'm going to i'm going to evaluate the cost on the cloud and i might uh, make a recommendation to dr khoja about it to give us some money uh, to you know to 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 pay for that but actually gpu use is a bit expensive on the cloud so we'll have to i will have to evaluate how much time it takes and what is the cost for that otherwise i'm going to be setting up virtual machines on my own computer okay on my own lab computer so i guess uh, that's it for today uh, we'll meet inshallah on friday i will show you the course outline uh and we are going to do everything related to neural networks i'm going to give you the notebooks that's going to be traditional neural networks so you need to first understand the back propagation algorithm very deeply uh in the neural network scenario you need to understand the parameters you need to do lots of hands on with the neural network before we move to deep learning is that fine ji yes, sir <laughs> Okay, so your task is to investigate about the GPUs. So if you can have your own, then that's great. Then that's great. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing exercise very soon. Yeah, so it's been nice uh, teaching you. Uh, we'll be inshallah. It's nice to see your motivation. Uh, this course is pretty, it's pretty interesting. So you, you, other, it will be good to learn inshallah. Tala, start officially from Friday. Okay. I have a question other than deep learning. Sorry, yeah, please ask. Uh, so can we take that uh, ML two and deep deep learning course? Take uh, you properly, Abhinash. Please. Ji. I can't hear you properly. Ji sir. Uh, मैं ये कह रहा था कि ML two and deep learning course हम simultaneously ले सकते हैं uh in this semester मतलब Or is it like we have to take ML two first and then deep learning? No, no, you can take them simultaneously. I told you there are two different types of things. Yeah, sure. But both of them are are like 
you know you you need to be on your toes to to learn if you want to learn ji because you need to understand the maths that's the first thing you need to understand ki how does the math work okay and then obviously you need to seek a deep learning how does it how it is manageable how can we manage it okay sir got it theek okay. hai thank you okay then i am going to be uploading the video tomorrow and uh, inshallah let's meet on friday for an official start inshallah okay uh, sir is video kidhar hum upload karenge YouTube सर को लिंक भी जरा दे दीजिएगा हमें अनाउंसमेंट के तौर पे पे जी जाहिर सी बात है मैं तो देखता भी नहीं है सर आप लोगों को नहीं देना तो और किसको देना है ठीक है सर सही है ओके थैंक्स अलॉट सलामकुम